As a Fortnite pro, it is absolutely important that you could run the game as smoothly as possible. If you're hitting low frames, you're going to find yourself completely stunk. And if your sensitivities don't allow you to move as quickly as possible, you're going to always remain a slow aimer and even worse, a slow builder. However, I will say this, you know, while most pros are willing to share whenever they find a nuisance and, you know, they love showing it off, what they can do with them, there are actually some secret tweaks to really look out for. But your crunch army where you at your motivation guy is back again. I'm here, man. I'm excited to bring you guys the latest tips and tricks to make you a better Fortnite player. So today we're going to be going over some lesser known and more subtle tricks that you probably don't realize pros use. Yes, they aren't based around skills, you know, per se, but rather tiny advantages that go under the radar until you point them out. You know, Fortnite skins come in many different shapes and sizes. You have your male skins, your female skins, your banana skins. You have skins based on popular media creatures and even pop idols. Really, at this point, if a property exists, it will eventually make its way into the Fortnite multiverse. However, there are actually some very subtle differences between skins that can really make them more attractive to the pros. You know, Fortnite skins don't offer any sort of advantage over the other. You know, your stats are all still the same and your hitboxes aren't really any different. The only thing that really changes is your appearance you know so how does choosing a skin help exactly good question well let me tell you this man surprisingly player skins do affect how we subconsciously view the game and you know how easily our minds register when an opponent comes into our lines of vision for example all right you know color can give you guys a slight advantage in game you know if a player is wearing an all green skin and they show up in a grassy field the colors tend to blend in a bit more meanwhile if a player is wearing an all white skin such as the stormtrooper and they go walking across the same field they can be a bit easier to spot since the color white pops out the advantage that we're talking about here is not invisibility but rather tricking the mind into taking really a few extra moments before registering your presence so really the point of choosing one skin over another is really all about that slight differential and reaction time okay so was your skin way too over the top and flashy or was it just simple and easier to blend in you know when it comes to pros everything is about being competitive you know no advantage can be dismissed no matter how minuscule with coaches that have been described as amazing providing experience you know that is extraordinary and easy to learn from proguys.com is the perfect place for any fortnite player looking to improve our coaches are available all day every day guys that and they will all they want to do is really help you just really play your best so head down to the description click the link and sign up today to become the best fortnite player that you could possibly be so something that you probably noticed before is how many of the pros out there tend to use female Fortnite skins. Why is this exactly? Hmm. You know, female Fortnite skins tend to be less bulky than their male counterparts and really make for an excellent smaller target. Does this mean that the myth of a smaller hitbox is true? Not at all. You know, the hitboxes remain the same. Once again, it's all about perception. Fortnite skins also have another practical use if you keep digging. Okay, so if you're running with their trio, considering using skins as your team uniform, this can be a great way of making the job of spotting each other much easier this also creates uniformity right so that you can get more accustomed to playing on a team this also prevents someone else who has the same skin as your teammate from getting thrown into the mix those extra seconds of reaction man can really break you in a really competitive game and so while fortnite does show you who is on your team regardless of skin having that extra layer just just makes it just so much easier when you're trying to take information at a glance fortnite skins can also be adopted by pros as their signature skin you know one example of this is dark bomber face sway uses this skin frequently for his YouTube thumbnails and as his player modeling game. Because of this, he has become, it has become a signature skin throughout most of his social media. So one little myth that you might have heard about a while ago probably was that changing your pickaxe and outfit can have an effect on your FPS. How exactly does that work? Well, you know, it all has to do with processing power and rendering in certain details in your items. For example, like say that you have a pretty dynamic skin that comes paired with the fancy pickaxe. You're also using a dynamic camo because it looks cool, right? Much like the previous tips, like sometimes less is more. And so if you're playing on a high-end PC, you may not notice the difference in FPS this can make. Rendering in these details, guys, isn't going to break your PC by any means. However, if you get better FPS by changing your skin, then you need to take advantage of that, man. Especially if you're not running on the most amazing hardware. Because of this, some pros would prefer to ignore back bling as well, especially capes since they're really unnecessary. Well, that's enough about Fortnite skins, but what about gliders, man? So according to Epic, cosmetic items do not offer any sort of in-game advantage. However, just like the Fortnite skins, bro, like their difference are all subtle until you really look at them closer from a pro's perspective. You know, gliders come in generally three different forms. Okay, if you have a standard glider where you hang underneath it, you have your rideable gliders where the player stands on top of it, 
and you have your umbrellas which take up at least like the screen space and have the simplest deployment animation. The larger the glider, the more of your screen is going to take up. Keep this in mind, all right? You know, some gliders are very fancy and they look, you know, really pleasing. You might even want to show them off. But, you know, having a smaller and simpler glider can really help you see more of your screen when landing, but also stay alert on the players that are landing on top of you. So during these drops, like you want as much visibility as possible. You know, some gliders also have effects that make them more aesthetically pleasing. All right, one example of this could be uh, the Cloud Llama board. It's a pretty neat surfboard and part of the summer event back in season seven. However, it also has a riptide effect in the rear that makes you feel like you're riding the waves. <laughs> All right, so interestingly enough, like these waves actually block part of the screen when you're deploying, meaning that you have to put in a little extra work into maneuvering your landing. So another example of this is the current battle pass item, Flavor Dust's Sparkle Wings Glider. With a large wingspan and a rainbow effect as you glide down, it makes it one of like the more cumbersome gliders. There's just too much on the screen when you're really looking for less. So having a bulkier glider or even one with more colorful effects also makes you easier to spot in the crowd. Okay, so when you're landing, the important thing to look out guys is for, you know, who else is going to be in the area. This shows you the danger level to expect, but also the general area of each other player. This can be good for getting those early game kills. So remember, man, keep those screens as clear as possible and shoot simpler gliders. Graphic settings are also something to play around with when you want to make subtle changes. If you ever watched a pro streaming or even seen clips of their gameplay, you may have noticed that they don't always use the max settings despite having a pretty good piece of hardware to play on. Why is that? After all, like if you can run Fortnite at its max capacity, shouldn't you do so? Well, not exactly. Yeah, in fact, you know, lowering the settings can be a great way of getting more FPS. Lowering settings will also focus on showing you the important bits, such as enemy players and structures. But, you know, seeing things is a bit more basic, but with a boosted FPS can be helpful. And so while this doesn't change much in terms of gameplay, the removal of that one detail can make it easier to spot movement and you can focus less on structure movements. So just to make sure that you don't try to run it on a potato graphics, like one of the downsides for turning it down too low is that you're gonna get mobile graphics on a PC and that can have an effect on noticing damage on your builds. Still though, experiment with those graphics settings and be sure, man, to really keep an eye on the FPS. Like when you found that sweet spot, whew, man, I'm telling you, just be sure to lock your FPS above what your monitor can handle. And this way, you can avoid dips and stay consistently at your max capacity. All right, so playing with lower settings to get the most out of your FPS is a pretty smart move that can really help any player hit those sweet spots. After all, like the most important part of a competitive game is being able to keep up with the rest of the competition view-wise. However, there's also another setting that you should look into that is the color setting. Why is that? Good question. What benefit could you possibly gain by changing these? Well, for starters, changing the color and brightness is going to allow you to see more clearly in those darker patches of the game. So when you're competing, you want to be completely aware of your surroundings at all times. However, depending on your setups, you might find that the color can vary from monitor to monitor. In fact, some monitors, especially those capable of 4K, can sometimes like, you know, just make dark patches even darker. And so this option, man, often flies over, you know, newer players' heads, especially those who are just accustomed to just to plug it in and just playing the game as it is. So the golden rule about playing competitively is that customizability is really everything to get you started on an even footing. All right, so here's another example of a lesser known change that can really help you. Catching players in the storm is a great way of getting some easy kills, guys, especially if they're straggling behind. Some players have made it easier for themselves just to look into the storm by just playing around with the colorblind settings. All right, go to your colorblind settings and set them to Triton Note. Then what you're gonna wanna do is crank that colorblind setting strain to 10. Finally, you're gonna wanna lower your brightness down by around 20 to 30, and this is gonna give you a small change in your ability to look into the storm a bit easier. Those shades of blue just look a little bit clearer. Okay, now whether or not you prefer these settings is completely up to you, but knowing that this is an option, I'm telling you right now, it's just a good way to explore what you're more comfortable with and really what's just worth your time. All right, bunch of crush me. that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hey, listen, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, man. Listen, I am back. We're doing things, we're taking things to the next level. So I hope you guys are ready. And I just want to encourage you to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. You know, many people probably counted you out, but I'm telling you right now, I'm counting you in. Believe in yourself. And I'm telling you, you're going to go far in this life. Hey, if you're going through depression or you're going through any sadness, you're going through some downs, you know, sometimes you got to go through things and, and, and learn sometimes, you know, um, um, 
you know, valuable lessons in life. And I know I have. So just keep going. You know, it may seem like it's taking forever, maybe for some things to change, but it, it is going to get better. And so be encouraged. I'm telling you, man, it may look a certain way today, but it's going to be better very, very soon. So keep your head up, guys. Proud of you.